When AIDS was first discovered, it was instantly a death sentence. And then for many people, especially a lot of gay men, the death sentence changed. With the advent of drugs and treatments, many men who thought they were going to die had to find a way and a place to live. To wit, a new documentary called Desert Migration about a group of men who migrated well, to the desert around Palm Springs. We're here with its producer, Mark Smolovitz. Mark, how are you? I'm good, David. Thank you for having me again. You know, my husband and I have been spending a lot of time in Palm Springs over the last few years and have, one, come to love it and also mm. realize there's a community there and have jokingly said there's kind of a Bay Area diaspora, a lot of gay men especially. And what we have realized, actually reading about your film and having seen the trailer, is that there was a real purpose to a lot of men, especially gay men, going to Palm Springs. Well, sure, yeah. So, so in our film, you meet 13 men, and um, the way that we found them was pretty organic. Um, so a lot of the men are getting their services at the Desert AIDS Project, and we did outreach through that organization, and the organization wound up really being quite an active partner on the making of the movie. And once we found them, um, the way that we sort of structured our involvement with them was we did these extensive audio interviews. And then when you sit down to our movie, you actually, see, you, you, so we, we took these audio interviews and we built out these scenes where the men actually play themselves in their own lives. So it was really quite ambitious, you know, to sort of trust the process. And some of the men, are, you know, are, are remarkable. All of them are special, but some of the stories really, you know, cut a nerve. Um, they all com came from urban settings, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, some other places too. Um, but it was this idea that they had to go somewhere else to get their life back. Um, and we really explore that theme throughout the movie. The other thing that is really special about Desert Migration that has been surprising audiences everywhere is really how universal it is. Um, even though it's a film about gay men who are living with HIV, who are long-term survivors with HIV, it really wound up being a film just about what it means to be aging in America. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, last summer, um, we partnered with AARP, um, Movies for Grown Ups, and we released the movie in 25 American cities over the course of one week. And it was the first time that AARP had ever released a documentary about gay people or, you know, or, or HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Because what we, they saw in our film was that it checked all the boxes of all the different areas of the concern that people face when they're aging. Um, income inequality and security, um, mental health issues, sex and dating. I mean, you name it, you sort of see it in these 13 stories in Desert Migration. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I'm smiling because it wasn't until we made the decision to spend more time in Palm Springs that I actually got an, an American Association for Retired People mm -hmm. card yeah. because they said, well, I'm, I'm not retired, I'm still working. And a gay friend in Palm Springs says, oh, my God, but Palm Springs is a place for AARP discounts. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, there you go. It, yeah. it has become an example, Palm Springs, the gay community and the community living with AIDS, HIV in Palm Springs, of a very small, observable demographic that mm -hmm. is that is aging. What did you learn about yourself as a, a gay man of a certain age by producing this film? Yeah, well, you know, so Daniel is the director, I'm the producer, and we're slightly younger than the men that are featured mm -hmm. in our film. Uh, most of the men are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, and because they were of the generation that was hardest hit by the onset of AIDS mm -hmm. and lost all of their friends, you know, they were sort of making sense of their lives in a way where, you know, they didn't expect to be role models. You know, I came, at, I was a generation after, and we were sort of hungry for role models, right? Because we lost mm -hmm. all of the older men to, to HIV and AIDS. And so it was um, vitally important, I think, that Daniel and I, as slightly younger men, mm -hmm. kind of reached out to make this project possible. And I'll share a story with you as an example. One of the, ver the oldest men of the 13 who was in his 70s, who was quite isolated, I mean, really living you know, almost as a hoarder in a, in a mm -hmm. hovel. It's a very difficult scene to watch in the film, and he's very depressed. Um, and for whatever beautiful reasons, he trusted us to come into his life and show that part of the story. Um, when we were filming down there, you know the famous windmills, and so we had this idea for a beautiful scene, and there's a penultimate scene in the film, where, and you kind of see that scene throughout, and then it kind of all comes mm -hmm. clear at the end of the film, where we bring all the men out to the windmills, and we, we, there was no way we were not going to bring Will out there, as, as mm -hmm. old and weak as he really was. So we went in our car, we picked him up, you know, schlepped him out to the windmills, and he could barely walk, right? And so we're helping him get out there, and it was such an important moment towards the end of his life to be honored and to be taken you know, into mm -hmm. this community. Um, the 13 men in our film 
Some of them kind of knew each other, some of them didn't know each other at all. It really became this sort of special experience where they all are now friends. And, mm. and there's also a scene in the movie that I love. It's a, it's a dinner party scene. And we constructed it because Daniel, who was living there, was noticing that the way men socialize is really with dinner parties. It's a yes. very different kind of dynamic. And we put all these men around a table and we just asked them to start talking about the issues that were of, of interest to them about HIV and AIDS. And so you, you get this little window on those kinds of conversations. The thoughts, the feelings, the internal monologue is really what Desert Migration is great, about. Great, great. Well, I understand you brought a trailer, so we're going to take a look yeah. at the trailer from Desert Migration. Let's great. take a look. Thank you. I don't think very many people arrive in the desert without having some sort of story. People would disappear. You'd see them one week, they'd look worse, and you wouldn't see them again. I was developing a social circle with people who were dying. And just like Lazarus, we were back from the dead. I've tried to structure my life where I would not be a freak in Palm Springs. Lots of men who have HIV whose lives have been jumbled about because of that. I came here with the express intent to live. When you come through that path... You know, it's interesting watching that to me. The thing that stands out is, well, there's that wonderful empty window mm -hmm. looking out at the windmills, but also a date jumped out at me too, 96, because I I remember being here in San Francisco and reading the first time that there was a treatment. No, no one even knew what it was. Right. But it was like, oh, there's, there's this bit of hope. But I was already hearing in the 1990s of not men that had gone to Palm Springs to live, but, oh, well, I'll go there to die. Mm -hmm. Did any of the 13 men with whom you spoke talk about that experience? Well, you know what? We moved here, and we thought we were going to die here, but now we've had to actually find a way to live. I mean, that was definitely a through line in all of their, our uh -huh. conversations with them. You know, I think all of them planned to die, um, and all of them sort of figured out that they weren't going to die, uh -huh. right? In different ways and on different timelines. Um, there's a very interesting guy in our movie called Eric, and he was, you know, getting a doctoral degree when he got started to get very sick from AIDS in the early 90s. And, you know, he tells a story very elegantly about, you know, when he turned 30, he thought he was going to die. When he turned 35, he thought he was going to die. Around about 40, he hadn't died yet, and he <laughs> thought to himself, I better come up with a different plan here. Um, so this idea of not having planned for retirement is a big theme in the film. Um, <laughs> you know, when you thought you didn't need to, and then all of a sudden you kind of have to. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew men meeting in San Francisco was kind of a black humor joke. It's like, oh, well, I'm just going to spend my credit cards up to the limit because I won't be here to pay him, and now... Wow, gosh, I got all these credit card bills. Yeah, I mean, well, it sounds silly, but it, it's it's very much a trope in the film. Yeah, and and it's not something really easy to sort out. Um, mm -hmm. There's another guy in the film called Joel, um, who talks about going to a support group and how he's the kind of person that you know never was really comfortable with being on disability, and he wants to go back mm -hmm. to work. And the messages that he was getting from his therapist, from all the other gay men in the support group is, Joel, you just can't. Mm -hmm. And this idea of how do people who have been out of the workforce, who want to be productive, who want to work, get back to work. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real conundrum, you know, because we're asking people to retire later and later and later. Um, and <laughs> the way that the, you know, the way that assistance kind of breaks down is that you really have to make very, very little in order to qualify. So, so a lot of the men just volunteer and some in very meaningful ways they volunteer, so they treat it as work. Right. right? But um, it's it's a big conundrum, like this whole idea of, well, if people are meant to keep contributing into society, how are we gonna make that possible right, for right. them? We've only got about a minute and a half left. Two questions. Mm -hmm. One is, talk to me about the director. Mm -hmm. What made this su such a labor of love, to use a cliche, for him? Well, you know, this was this is his first feature-length film, yes. um, and you know, with that, there's you know, it's always you know a lot of care and attention that goes into it, and because he was living there among these men, um, he felt a certain responsibility. Um, interestingly, when he moved to Palm Springs, he also was experiencing some depression, and this whole idea of how do you kind of get up and get on with your day was something that he was struggling with. 
and when he would meet men who were older, who had been sort of struggling with this for years, it was, he had, you know, a certain connection to them, and he felt like he could sort of be a, a sort of conduit for getting their stories out there. This is a big theme in the movie that you encounter, is how do you, when you wake up every day, and you live with an illness, okay, there you are, what are you gonna do with that day? So the way that we actually structure the film is actually a day in one life, okay? And so we meet the men in the morning, we meet them in the noon, midday, and we meet them at night, and sort of see them in very ordinary activities that kind of open up familiar settings where you get a, like a, a bird's eye view on sort of what these men are thinking right, about. Right, right, right. We've only got a few seconds left. Mm -hmm. You have covered AIDS and HIV through the course of your career. Mm -hmm. I guess the question is, did you think this was gonna be, in a sense, a big part of your life's work? You know, yes in every way, and I guess I'll leave you with this. You know, as long as this pandemic is still mm -hmm. with us, I'm still gonna be telling stories about it. Um, I do feel strongly that we are in what I call the last act of AIDS, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to be there, and I wanna see it come to an end, but until it's over, I'm gonna still be making movies about it. Great, thanks so much. Thank you, David. We've been speaking with Mark Smolovitz, producer of the film Desert Migration, about gay men living with AIDS, HIV, in the desert. Someplace they went to die, but are learning to live. Next up, our conversation with Summer Lee Kasher, Executive Director of San Francisco's iconic Cartoon Art Museum. We'll be right back. <laughs>